Cable and wires. As electricians, that is our sole goal, is to install cable and wires in various different installations. I have a whole bunch of cable here in front of me and I'm gonna talk about them in this video. So as electricians, we install cables. That's what we do. We connect wires up and we make things happen. Now, as part of that, you're gonna come across a whole bunch of different types of wires and different types of cables and how we might use them in different installations. So I'm gonna talk about some of them. I have some examples here. I'm gonna talk about some that we don't have. And I'm gonna talk about how we choose which ones to use because there are actually rules around that. So let's start by just talking about the types of cable I have here in front of me. Um, I'm going to start with the most obvious one that as uh, electricians using, working in commercial industries and domestic industries, this is the one you're going to see the most often. So that's this cable here in front of me. This is this white cable. This is thermoplastic sheath cable, double insulated. So this is called double insulated because it has two layers of insulation. The outer white layer and then inside, if we were to strip this back, we would find that there are three wires in here and they all have individual color coded insulation. So in this case, we have red, black, and green with the yellow stripe. Depending on the wiring you're using, depending on the colors that you might have. This particular one here, because there's two cores and an earth, um, a lot of times it will get called two core and earth. It might get called twin and earth. It might get called two and earth. So various different terms that uh, get thrown around, all meaning basically the same thing, that we have an active and neutral and an earth wire in this particular type of cable. Now, moving to this side over here, I have the same type of cable, but this is what we call a twin cable because, yes, you guessed it, it only has two cores in it. And this particular one has red and white. And we use that a lot for wiring up switches and light fittings and that sort of stuff. So thermoplastic sheath again, but this one only is a twin. Over here, I have this one here. Again, thermoplastic sheath cabling, but this one is single insulated, or sorry, double insulated, but it's a single wire. So this one gets known as the term SDI, or single double insulated, okay? And again, the color will depend on what you're wiring. This particular one is red, it comes in other colors, of course. So, thermoplastic sheath cabling, the most common cabling you are going to come across. But there'll be times on jobs when you might have to use this one. And this is called single insulated wire. Um, and quite often in the trade, we use the term building wire, which is probably the wrong term to use, but there you go. So this is single insulated wire and this wiring under the rules and regulations cannot be run unenclosed. That means it needs some sort of protection. So if I was to use this wire, I've got to run this through conduit or it's got to go through a panel or it's got to go through somewhere where it cannot be bumped, moved, broken or damaged in any way. Whereas the double insulated wire can be put in places where there could be the risk of minor bumping. Um, still not damage, if you, you wouldn't put this in a factory, for example, no, you wouldn't do that. Um, but in roof spaces, in wall cavities, where it could get bumped around a little bit, then that is perfectly acceptable where this wire wouldn't be. And just like the TPS, this wire comes in various different colors as well. So depending on what you're wiring up. Moving on, then I have this, this nice bright red cabling. And again, just like my white TPS, this is also TPS. This is um, red TPS, and it is red because it is for fire alarm systems. And it would have a higher fire rating than these other ones would have. So this particular cabling, if you see that in the ceiling, you know it's for an automatic fire alarm system, um, and it's in central service hence why it's red, so it's pretty obvious. Uh, you can even buy black and blue TPS cabling now for different installations. Blue, I believe, is air conditioning. I'm not too sure what the black one's for. 
Um, I've only recently seen that floating around in the shops, but there you go. Um, blue is for air conditioning, red is for fire alarm systems. So, when you are doing some wiring up, you may come across this one down here, and anyone who's ever done any work with speakers or home audio will recognize this. This is what we call figure eight, because essentially it is two twin wires put together, and it forms like a figure eight. Um, most time people will just call it speaker cable. Interestingly enough, you will come across advertisements on television and various other media that will advertise certain brands of this figure eight and tell you how awesome it is and super expensive and you should buy this brand. Cable is cable. It really, really is, especially when you're dealing with speaker cable because you're dealing with very low current. So, you know, don't get fallen into the trap of going out and buying some really expensive brand because they're oxygen free or some other crazy gimmick. Cable is cable, it's still going to work, okay? All right, speaker cable, moving on. I have, hidden away here, I have this. This is coaxial cable, and we use coaxial cable for installation of television and closed circuit TVs and security and all that sort of stuff. And this is a little bit different, where it has a, generally has a single core, uh, sometimes you can, it gets, comes in dual core, and the core, the copper core is surrounded by a plastic, a really plasticky type thick sheath, and then it has some um, braiding, some uh, aluminium braiding, which is a shielding, and then it could even sometimes, depending on the brand and the type you get, it can also have uh, like a tin foil wrap around as well before you get to the outer insulation. And depending again on the type of coax you're using for whichever um, wiring system you're installing, the level of shielding, the thickness of all this stuff will, um, will change. But essentially that's what it is. And it's used, yes, for television. And the reason we have this shielding is to try and stop interference. So interfering with the signals that might come through. Then I have this cable here. This cable is called flexible cord. It comes in various different colors, white, gray, orange, etc. Um, and flexible cord is a kind of cabling you use for extension cords and anything that needs to be rather flexible. And again, just like all of these other cables, it comes in different variations. Um, this one is two core and earth. You can get it in four core, five core, all sorts of different uh, variations depending on what you're wiring up. Um, and flexible cord is slightly different in the fact that the individual copper cores, so the individual conductors, um, are much, much thinner than you would have in some of this other wiring. And not only is it thinner, there's more of them, and that allows for that more flexibility. Um, so this is a sort of cabling you might find more in heavy industrial settings. Um, and on top of that, there's one we call orange circular, which again, is a circle, circular cable. It's not a flexible cord. Um, it is just round orange cabling, which gets used a lot in heavy industry. And then there is the larger cabling that we use for submains and uh, high distribution loads. And that is basically just copper cores with a black insulation. Um, and they come in various different sizes as well. So that's most of the cable. Oh, sorry, there is one other type of cable that you may come across. And it comes by, there's a few different names for this. It's, it's known by the name Pyro um, or MIMS cable. And that cable is used in particular for anything that's gonna be um, used in heat. So for example, underfloor heating will use that cable. That cable has two cores and it has like a mineral insulation. It's like a powder type insulation. And that's enclosed by a, in a copper tube. And there's a set way that you have to terminate and uh, cut and move these cables around. Um, they're not easy to work with and you really can't make too many mistakes with them. So if you ever pull out the element of an oven, that is made from that kind of cable. Um, now, there's also one other cable that I can think of that you might come across uh, in the general electrical industry, and that would be armored cable. So armored cable is kind of like all of these put together. Uh, it's more, if you think of the coaxial cable, it has a shielding around it, then armored cable literally has steel wire 
shielding. And that's really, again, for protection. And you find that a lot in places like mines and really, really heavy, heavy industrial places where things are likely to get bashed around and, and damaged. And then, of course, there's data cabling as well, which if you go into that part of the industry, there are various versions of data cabling that you'll come across. That's pretty much it as far as cables are concerned. There are other odd cabling that you can get, but these are the most common. Now, how do you determine which cable to use and when? Well, that is based on two things. The first thing is obviously the environment. Where is this cable getting run? If this cable is getting run in a heavy industrial environment where there's a likelihood of it getting damaged, then you're not gonna be using this stuff. Okay, the TPS is not gonna happen. Um, you want something a little bit stronger, a little bit with a little bit thicker insulation. Um, so that's, that's the first thing. The second thing you need to consider then is current carrying capacity. So how much current do you actually require for that circuit that you're installing? And that will then decide on what size cabling you choose. So you may be running a cable in a commercial building and you might be using this and that's perfectly fine. But depending on the amount of current means you might need to use a larger size. So this one I have here with me at the moment is 1.5 millimeter squared. It's good up to about 15 amps in some circumstances. And I'll talk about that in a moment. Generally, we just rule of thumb, we say 10 amps, okay? Um, if you need more than that, then you would be getting a, the next size up, which is 2.5 millimeters square. And that can run up to about 20 amps. And again, maybe a little bit more. And again, depending on circumstances. So you need to select the size. Now, how you do that is you actually consult the standards. And here in Australia, we have a standard called ASNZS 3008. And that explains the current carrying capacity for each of the different types of cable. Um, and it looks in detail into the kind of environments you might use it in. So for example, there's a thing where we call derating of the cable. And what that means is this. Let's assume I have this cable here and let's assume it can run 10 amps. Now, that might be perfectly fine if I was to run this cable you know, through a roof space and there's nothing else there, just the roof space, some timber, that's it. But as soon as I add insulation into that roof space and I'm enclosing this cable, then that means it's any heat that's generated from the current flowing through the cable. And remember, heat is a byproduct of electrical circuits, so you're always gonna have some heat. Any heat that's dissipated can't go anywhere because the insulation is stopping it. It's insulating it. So that means then, if the hotter this is gonna get, the less current you can run through the cable. So although it may be good for 10 amps, you might find that in that instance, that circumstance, it actually can only run eight amps. So you need to be aware of these things. You may run a, some of this cable underground, for example, in a conduit. Now underground, it's gonna be quite cold. So you might find that you can actually run a higher rating of amps through that cable. So all of these things are detailed in the standard. And if you are in another country, I'm sure you would also have a standard as well, which details how and when you can use the different cabling. So it's really important that you are always consulting these standards before you make a selection on the cabling that you need to use. Because the last thing you want is to find out that you've installed the wrong cabling and you cause a fire, or even worse, somebody gets hurt. So that's kind of a, a basic overview of cabling, how you select cabling, um, and what to consider. Remember, environment is important. Current carrying capacity is also important when you are choosing your wiring. Um, I hope you got something from that video. I hope you have learned something from this video and please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.